Hello, welcome back to Mars. I'm Mick, we're playing Station Ears. Now today we're back at our programming workstation and today we're going to talk a bit about functions. Uh, this will allow us to reuse bits of code so as where our programs, repetitive parts of our programs can be coded in one place and you don't have to use up all your precious lines of code doing the same thing over and over again. So uh, let's have a quick look. Now here we have our basic setup. Got three lights and a button, all just connected to pins. Light one, light two, light three, and the button connected to the pins there. So we have our basic bit of code. I've just aliased the buttons for latest the lights for one, two, three to D0, D1, D2, and the button into D3. Once again, they're not necessary, it just makes our code a lot easier to read. Now the code I've got here. It just switches on light one, then it goes into a waiting loop to check, see if the button has been pressed. If the button hasn't been pressed, so branch, if it's equal to zero, so the button hasn't been pressed, you go back to our waiting tag here. So we created a tag there, so it'll just keep jumping back to there. When the button has been pressed, switch the light off, switch the next light on, and we've set up another waiting loop here. Once again, once that button has been pressed, switch light two off, light three on, into another waiting loop. So we're working our way down the code here each time the button is pressed. If we confirm, export, switch it on, we should have light one. Push the button, we go to light two. Push the button again, we go to light three. Now that is a sort of a repetitive thing that we're doing. Push it again, we're back to the start. Now if we look at the code we see but this waiting loop is exactly the same as this waiting loop and exactly the same again. Once again, it's it's only four lines of code there that we're repeating. But if you have something that is extensive, um, when I was writing the Amy, Amy script there, it was a similar sort of thing. It stepped its way through the code, but I wanted to update the displays on all of those locations there, and it was quite a long bit of code to update all the displays. And we are limited by the amount of code we can have to 127 lines there. So if you have to repeat a bit of code in lots of parts of, the script, of a script, it can be beneficial to reuse it. Now previously we have been, re, we've been splitting and jumping to other parts of code, but they have always come back to a fixed location. So if I was going to take this out to a separate function, it'll have to come back to a different location each time we call it. It's not coming back to a fixed point, so it's going to be a bit harder to do. But it is the same code, and if we can reuse that bit of code, it will save us a lot of coding and a lot of lines. So if we do drop a little function out here, we'll just call it, well, we'll just call it wait. And we will just copy the exact same things from there there and yield and our branch run again. Right here, so you'll go back to wait, not wait one. So we just go back, that's a little loop there. But now we have to jump back to the code. That's going to be the tricky one. So instead of calling this function here, I can just delete all of that and just jump to wait. Yeah, get off there. Right, so light on, we call our wait function and light off. So we can do that for each of the places there, but after we call the wait function, it'll have to come back to here. Right, so that's shortened our code then by putting calling the wait function part, we're still stuck with how do we jump back to where it was called from. So what we, one way we can do it is we can actually tell it where to come back to. So we're going to use our register R1 and we're just going to tell it where to come back to. So we move into R1 10, which is the line number we want it to come back to. Then we call the function. Down here, go through our function. Once it's been set, we jump back to whatever's in R1, which was 10. So it'll jump back to the next line. We call down, once again, we move into 
R1 15. That's where we want it to come back to after we've called the function. Do the function, it'll return back to 15. Once again, return to 20, and off we go. So confirm, export you, we're onto light one, push the button onto light two, onto line three, and back to the start. But with something like this, you want to use fairly often. Uh, you'd think the developers would include a way to actually do this in a code. Well, they have. This is our next family of branch functions. They are the branch and return set of functions. Now, these functions you can find on the wiki, of course, under MIPS. We get our list of commands here. Now, down the bottom, once again, with all of our branch commands, we have our table here. We have our basic set of branch commands. We have our branch relative commands, which we've been through before. We're looking at the branch and return commands. So these are basically the same, t well, they're not basically, they are exactly the same syntax as the branch commands, but they finish with an AL at the end of it. So branch greater than, branch greater than, AL. So this one will store the, the line number of the calling, calling function, or the calling line, command, and store it into register RA. Now, register RA is just a, so another register that we've used before. We've used R0, we've used R1, we've given them aliases for names. RA is just a special use register. Uh, so we have 16 registers, which we can use for ourselves, but there's a special use register, which is RA. Well, there's also an SP one, but let's not worry about that one for now. So now we don't have to worry about telling it what line it's come from. So we can get rid of all of them. We've shortened our code even further. But instead of using a jump command, we'll use a jump and return. We'll jump and store the calling number into register RA. So then at the end of it, once we've run our function, we don't jump back to R1, we jump back simply to RA. That's your return address. So when you call a JAL function, it'll store that line number there. When jump back, it knows where to come back to automatically. Let's prove that it still works. Export that, we're good and going. Hit the button, still the same functionality and we have reduced the length of our code considerably. There we go. Now, just to prove that it is storing the line number there, I'll whack it onto the display there. So we shall have to hack, hook that in here and alias it up. Well, there we go. I've popped our display into D4. Now, I don't have to rewrite, update that display on each of these calls, because I can use it in my reusable function. So once the function is called, I'm just going to update the display with the setting and display RA on the, on the display. So if we confirm that, export it, switch off my lights that are halfway through. Now, we have line 10. Look at it again, now it's line 14. If we edit our code, so line 14, when we've got light 2 on, line 14 is return the next line in the code. Line 10 was the first one, so if we push it again, we should see line 18. 18 we have it. So once again, back to the start, we should be back to 10. So this is a way of drastically shortening the amount of code we've got to do. I mean, we can do it, we can reduce this code even further because as we're dealing with multiple items that are all the same, I can just re-alias what light one and light two and light three are and then switch the on-off functions down here as well. So here's our new shortened code once again. So this time we're just going to say a light is, to, is the light attached to Z0. Then we're going to jump to our function, jump and return, called flash. So I've flash, I've got the light on and the light off and the wait function all down here in our reusable function. So we're saying light is the light attached to D0. Now execute our function, switch it on, do your wait. Once the wait has happened, 
switch it off, jump back to where you were. Now it says light is actually the light attached to D1. Do it again. Switch it on, wait, switch it off, comes back. It says light is now the third light. Whenever we're talking to light, it's now the third light. So do your function again. So it is simply just changing what which light we're referring to each time, then running the whole the whole bit of code again. So if we confirm that, export, we've got light one, push the button, we've got light two, push the button, come on button work, we've got light three, and back to the start. Once again we can see we're on line six, now line eight, should be line ten, and back to line six. There we go. So it is running our function, remembering the return address. Now, there is a trick with this, is because there is only one RA. So if you want to call a function from within a function, it will overwrite the old value of RA, which is where things can get a bit hairy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull our wait function here, and we're going to make turn that into another function. So I'll move that down here. We, we're only using it once, we don't need to do this, but I'll just do it for the purpose of a demonstration. So there we have it. So I'm going to turn on the light, jump down here for the wait function, and once the wait function is it will return back, switch the light off, and jump back up into the code. Won't it? Hmm? 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 No, maybe not. So now if we export that one, now we see the number that we have stored in RA is 15. The line of code we want it to go back to will be line 6. So when we push that button, it's stuck down here at 15, so it's not going to return back to where it was. Because when we jumped to here, we had line 8 stored in RA, which would have worked fine. But when we made the second jump, it's written at the 15 when it made the second jump, which is where it does want to come back to, to here. Then it does that, it jumps back, but then when it says jump to RA, RA is still 15. So it's now going to jump back to here and just get stuck in this loop here and never ending. So we don't have multiple RAs to work with. But we do have a bit of a trick we can do, which can be a bit tricky hence the name, a trick, but we can use the stack. So when we first come into here, we will push. All right, now push, push is a, stack is basically what its name is. It's a stack of values, which is a last in, first out type arrangement. So if we push something onto the stack, it will store it in a pile of remembered numbers. So then it will remember what RA is. It's on the top of the stack. So I can go and now change it. When I come back, I want to get my RA back. So I can pop RA back off the stack. So it's simple. Push. We'll chuck that onto the stack. Pop. We'll pull it back out again. So I should now have my old RA back. Confirm. Export. So now it said... 16 is where it was. That's that's our extra function down the bottom. So once I step out of that function by pushing the button, it should now retrieve the the old RA and jump to the next 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 light. There it is. So RA is displayed as 16, which was which was what it is in the wait function. So it's still using the same wait function, but it manages to find its way back to the, the main body of the code to change the light. So, once again, we are getting into some deep, uh, deep inception on that one there. So we've got functions within functions. Once again, be careful of your return address. Make sure you store them properly. Now you can just keep going deeper and deeper into functions here. So each time you go into a function, you just push RA and pop it as you come out. So if you go into another one, you can push and pop here and then move into another one, push and pop here. But you have to make sure you step back out of them in the right order and make sure you don't miss any because you have to 
as I say, it is a first in, last out. So whatever the last one was you pushed in, you have to pop it back out again, or you'll get everything mixed up. So can be a bit tricky, but can be very powerful. So it's it's not your basic programming. Um, so there are other uses for the stack, but I'm not going to go into that here today. So I'm just talking about functions and how you can reuse bits of code. Now, of course, I have just used the jump function here, the so JAL. It does also work with any of the conditional branching. So uh, the branch greater than zero, branch less than zero, just add an AL on the end of it, and you can go and do some code and return if need be. Um, so yes, as I say, I've just used jump, but branch works in exactly the same way if you have a need for it. But that's the way it works. So functions, it will store the calling calling line number into RA, so as it knows where to go back to. If you want to call a function from within a function, make sure you remember where this one has to go back to. Just push and pop, and away you go. If you're not calling a function within a function, it doesn't really matter. Just jump back to RA at the end of it, and it should know where it's going. Righto. Well, I think that should have fried everyone's brain for now. As I say, I won't go into the stack. We'll save that for another day. But that should be it for today. So, till next time, happy building. See ya.